In our current scene, we have a bomb sprite and an explosion event created by the particle system. Also, we have a button that says activate bomb. Alright, let's start by creating a bomb timer script. Inside our script, we need to reference our particle system, and we need to create a method that will play our particle system. When playing particle system, it's best to make sure the particle system doesn't have any parents. After playing our system, it's best to just destroy it. After our explosion method is ready, we need to create an animation controller to attach to our animator. With our animator ready, we can create an explosion animation. After creating our animation, we can press the Add Property button, select the Sprite Render, and select Sprite. This will allow us to change between our two sprites. For this animation, I'll use the same sprite to make some cool looking flashing effects. To add our second sprite to this animation, we need to go to the timestamp that Sprite Change happens, and then drag our second sprite to the Sprite Render. After dragging your sprites, make sure to click Add Key button next to your animation name. To make the flashing effect, we'll copy these two keyframes a couple of times, and that should be it. What's cool about animations is that you can make sure your custom methods run in a specific timestamp in your animation. You need to click the add event button, and drag it to the timestamp you want. Once you click the event icon, you should see a parameter named function in your inspector. From here, we can select the explosion method we have created. To attach our bomb to our activate bomb button, we need to drag our bomb to an on-click event. After that we need to select our animator, find the play string method and then write the name of your animation state, in our case explosion. And after doing all that, if you play our scene and click our button, we can see that our bomb explodes. And if you want to, we can change our animation time to make our bomb explosion either slower or faster. To create a visual timer, we need to first create a canvas, and then change our canvas's render mode to the world space. After changing it, we need to scale it way down to 0 0.01. Then we need to create two circle images inside this canvas. One of them will be our background for the timer, and one of them will do the actual countdown. After coloring our circles, we need to head to the main timer. If you head to the main timer and look to the image type and change it to field, by changing fill amount, we can actually create a visual timer. To do it, we need to head back to our animation. Click on Add Property, find our main timer, select the image component, and then select the fill amount. And if we head to the end of our animation and change the fill amount to zero, it animates the image to act like a timer. And after playing our game and seeing our animation, we can see that our timer works perfectly with our bomb animation. We can further extend our scripts by making our bomb add force to nearby objects. For this, I have created a bunch of game objects that have a collider and a region body on them. Later I added these lines to our script. What this does is that it checks a circle for nearby objects. If those objects are region bodies, it adds a certain amount of force to them. And after playing our scene, we can see that a force is applied to these objects. This was it for this tutorial, I hope it was helpful to you, and I wish you good luck on your projects.